Right. One of the biggest questions that students always ask us is, yes, we want to prepare for GATE, but how should you prepare for GATE? Now, there could be different types of students. There could be different types of uh, conditions around those students. For example, a student could be in the second year or a student could be a third year, a final year or a someone who has passed out of engineering. Similarly, the conditions around them could be different. For example, there could be a coaching institute pretty close to them or they could be in a city which is far removed from the uh, coaching institutes. So how does one really prepare for GATE? I think irrespective of the conditions where the coaching institutes are available or not, irrespective of the fact of which year the students are from, there are some basic fundamental things that students need to do which will give them an understanding of how they should be preparing for GATE. So the first and the foremost thing that students need to understand is the GATE pattern itself. Okay. Now, one thing which is always very very important, if you are preparing for any examination, you all always look at the previous year's papers. When I say pattern, I am not talking about the previous year's papers. I am talking about the structure of the GATE examination. So, if let us say you are from a branch like a civil, an electronics, a mechanical, a chemical, a biotechnology, etc. Okay, the format of the paper is something like this, where out of about 100 marks of the paper, 70 to 75 is technical, 15% is aptitude and the 10 to 15% is mathematics. Okay. Now this is a broad sense of what the paper is. Similarly, if you are from another branch of engineering, for example, if let's say you are a physics uh, gate taker or a chemistry gate taker or let us say somebody from life sciences, then the, there is a difference in the paper. The paper does not have mathematics. So you will have aptitude for 15 marks and the rest of the marks would be for technical. And it could be technical within the subjects that you have chosen like for physics students it is physics or it could be an additional topic for example for life sciences students it is chemistry which is taken as an additional topic. So this is the first thing you need to understand that this is the structure of my paper. The next thing that you need to know is where do you stand and where you need to be. What is the gap which exists. So, If, let's say, the cutoff scores, which is the first benchmark that you want to meet, is this level, which in most of the papers is in the vicinity of around 25 to 30, unless the paper is really easy, then it becomes about 35 or 40. Typically, the cutoff, let's say, purely from an academic perspective, it is around 25 to 30. So that's the first milestone that you want to achieve, which is tell yourself you have qualified the GATE exam. The second thing that you need to understand is that cutoff does not get you anywhere, whether it is PSUs that you're looking for, or if you're looking for getting into the top colleges like the IITs and the IICs, etc., you need to go much higher than the cutoff. Now, again, typically the scores that you're looking for are in the vicinity of around 50 to 55. So, purely from an academic perspective, let us look at a score of 55 as being your target score if you want to get into a PSU or a uh, top quality IIT. The next thing that you need to understand is where do you stand? You may stand here, you may stand here, you may stand here before you start your preparation. It is very very important to benchmark yourself. So if you are here then you know that this is the gap which exists between where you are and where you want to be. There are students who are going to take a test 
initially and they would not even score zero. They could go into a negative zone because the gate exam has negative marking. So if you are somewhere here, then the gap becomes even bigger. Don't worry if you are in the negative. Let me tell you, 40 to 50 percent of the students before they start preparing for gate score less than 10. Many of them in the negatives. So gate is a test where you are likely to start off on a very low level when you start your preparation. That is because it is an intelligent test. But at least it gives you an idea with regard to where you stand. It tells you where you want to be and it acts like a focus, like a goal for you in your entire preparation plan. Okay. This is where you are and this is where you want to be. If everybody who is taking the test is more or less at the same level, is the path to achieve the same for everybody? No, it is not the same for everybody. This understanding is very very important because for every person who succeeds, the root of success is different. You are a person who is strong in mathematics, you might score out of the 55 required from the 25 to 30 marks of aptitude and mathematics, you might score close to 20 plus. Somebody who is not strong in mathematics from the aptitude and mathematics will score only 5 to 10, which means somebody requires 30 from technical and somebody requires 45 from technical, which means the entire preparation strategy has to be different, the plan has to be different. Okay, so when we are talking about how to prepare for gate, the first thing that you need to know is what is the st broad structure of the gate examination, where do you stand and then in your branch of engineering, what is the distribution of scores. That is very very easy to uh, find. You can go on to the careerevenues.co.in website, go to that particular respective engineering department's page and you'll be able to see the test matrix which tells you what has been the distribution of scores in the last five years of the gate examination. So you get to know thermodynamics is so important, strength of material is so important or in any other branch, any other subject, how important is analog or how important is chemical reaction engineering or microbiology for that matter. You will get to know where does gate mostly ask questions from. Once you have got to know that, you need to know what are your strengths and your weaknesses because your preparation is going to be based upon your strengths. Okay? If I am trying to run a race or if I am trying to compete, I am going to succeed not because I have been able to overcome all my weaknesses but because I have been able to use my strengths better than somebody else. Yes, you need to try and minimize your weaknesses but success always comes out of your strength while trying to work as much as possible on your weaknesses. So, once you have the entire test structure in place, Once you know the split up like this, for example, 20% in mechanical engineering is for thermodynamics and its applications, 15% is strength of material, 12% is theory of machines. I'm just using numbers purely from an explanation perspective. You know what are the subjects that you are comfortable with. Now, if you are in your third year or your fourth year, or if you have passed engineering, you would have seen most of these subjects. But if you are in your second year, then there is a probability that you might not have been exposed to some of these uh, subjects because they will come in your third year. So if you are in your second year, then don't worry about this part which is what are my strengths and weaknesses. You have got sufficient time to make sure that everything becomes a strength and you are able to crack the gate easily. But if you are a third year, a fourth year or a student who has passed out, then you know very well how much you enjoy each subject when you are doing an engineering. So if you are strong in strength of material, 
then you know that out of the 15 marks which are there for strength of material, you need to at least try and score 11 or 12 if not all the 15. Okay. So if you focus only on a few subjects, you would be able to come close to the cutoff score which is required and if you focus on a couple of more subjects, then you would pretty much be close to the uh, excellent score which is required to get into an IIT. Then what is it that we do? Doses, that is about the strong areas. As far as the weak areas is concerned, you need to come up to a minimum benchmark level. You cannot be absolutely weak to an extent that you cannot answer a single question or easy question also from that particular field. At least the easy questions you should be able to answer even from your weak areas. So maybe from your areas of not so strong uh, domains, try to score 8 to 10 because a paper is likely to have about 40 to 50 marks of easy questions. At least try to score 8 or 10 there and the balance from your strong areas, you should comfortably get a score of about 60. Now the next part of the discussion that we need to have is how to prepare. Let's discuss it. First thing that we have done is we have understood what the gate structure is. Second thing is now you know that you need to benchmark yourself. So you need to take a diagnostic test, ideally the previous year's gate paper and see whether you score a 0 or a 5 or a 15 or a 25 so that you know where you stand. And the third thing is you know the overall test matrix and you have identified your strong areas from where you want to score the maximum number of marks. The next session is going to be about how do you plan your preparation given the time that you have for the gate.